In today's video, we're going to be going over the top five fragrances for January 2024. These are the five fragrances that I've been reaching for the most for today's video for my select five. Everyone, just before we continue, if you haven't subscribed, first of all, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe. When you subscribe, it helps me to create a lot more content for you guys at a faster pace, but I need your help. Go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe because it helps me with the progression of this channel. And once we get to where we need to be, then we can go ahead and start giving free stuff, free giveaways on this channel and a bunch of other fun stuff. But I need you guys to help me out in regards to the subscribes. So go ahead and do that. And as always, I do appreciate your help. Now let's go ahead and get to it with the top five fragrances for January 2024. For this list, we're gonna be starting in reverse order, starting from number five to number one. And just a big disclaimer, just because we're starting from reverse order, in no ways does this mean that any of these fragrances are gonna be inferior to one another. It's just for the sake of this video and the format. Starting at number five on this list is gonna be coming in from the house of Chanel. This is Antaeus Pour Homme. Oh yeah, wow, guys. For all of my day one subscribers, you guys know me that I am a old soul by heart. I am an old soul. I love old school fragrances and old school vintage formulations. And Antaeus Pour Homme definitely says old school. If you guys are familiar with Kodos by YSL or uh, Pour Homme by Paco Rabanne, there is a lot of similarities going on with all these fragrances, being that they're uh, 80s powerhouse fragrances, of course, 80s powerhouse fragrances, very unapologetic in your face in regards to performance and the actual blend of the fragrance. But what I love about all these fragrances, especially with Antaeus Per Ohm, is that they share the similarities of time, basil, and clary sage within all of these fragrances. So they have a very strong foundation, but Antaeus Per Ohm definitely does have that time. It does have myrrh and animalic or aldehydic approaches as well within the blend. So you do get that zesty and brightness, but in the opening, you get a very animalic, very civet-like musk coming from the fragrance itself. And then on the dry down, you get a very, very bright and zesty dry down coming from some citruses. And again, the dry down here is a lot more zestier. It's a lot more brighter coming from citrus, clary sage, thyme, and coriander. So there are some spices as well, some dry and hot spices, but this is lovely. And I don't get a lot of leather uh, to my nose. I get a lot more aldehydic and animalic notes in regards to the opening, but I absolutely love this. And let's go ahead and spray some on camera so that you guys get an accurate impression of the atomizer. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three. Oh yeah, guys, that's amazing. It's really, really good. You do get that citrus top, but mixed with those aldehydes and those animalics as well. It's very, very good. Now this is a EDT concentration. Unfortunately, Chanel does not offer an EDP concentration for this. And for me, it's just such a big disappointment that Chanel doesn't offer other flankers of this fragrance because it has a strong foundation. It has those aromatics coming through herbal components and herbal facets, and then it has some spices as well. So a very good foundation. And I can definitely see myself buying flankers from Antaeus Pour Homme if Chanel ever decided to do that in the future because again a very strong foundation this can easily go a flanker that has more of a leather uh, base or maybe one that has a tobacco base very very versatile it's just so unfortunate that chanel doesn't want to do anything else with it but this is so good guys again i'm an old soul by heart i'm very old school i love older formulations vintage formulations vintage fragrances this is so beautiful to me very very gorgeous guys if you haven't tried this out go ahead and try it out once again this is chanel and teus pour Homme. All right, coming in at number four on this list is going to be coming in from the house of Tom Ford. This is going to be Ebene Fume. Oh, guys, so, so, so good. I think that if Tom Ford were to ever, I mean, ever discontinue this fragrance, that's going to be the last straw. I will never buy anything from Tom Ford if they ever discontinue this. It is so, so good. For my day one subscribers, you guys know that I love Palo Santo. I love that note. I love that incense 
wood note coming from Palo Santo, and that's exactly what this is. This is rum, this is Palo Santo, there's a lot of myrrh, there's incense in this as well. So, so alluring, so seductive, very, very gorgeous. And as you can tell, guys, that color is just mesmerizing. It's that very cognac, red, brown, orange hue to it. When you see something like that and it smells this good, you have to buy a lot. And I do have some backup options of this as well. I bought this in the uh, 250 ml option and then I do have another backup bottle of the 100 ml. I will be stocking up on this. I'm going to try to find a discounter for this, but this is so good. This is one of the exceptions that I would actually pay full retail for a Tom Ford fragrance. It's going to be with this, with Ebene Fume. Performance, I wish it performed a lot more on my skin. I wish there was a extra de parfum or an intense version of this, but this is so, so good, guys. I do recommend it as a blind buy if you guys like cognac, if you guys like rum fragrances that don't go gourmand. This goes a little boozy, but it goes Palo Santo for the most part, mixed with resins and a lot, a lot of mirth. So it's smoky, woody, and very sappy as well, but it does not go extremely sweet. It doesn't go gourmand. Very, very handsome, an extremely handsome fragrance. And let's go ahead and spray this on camera so that you guys get an impression of the atomizer as well. So I'll go ahead and spray some on the wrist. Here we go. Oh, yeah, guys, that's just a liquory vibe. A liquor vibe with that Palo Santo again, that incense that's just burning in the background. I love it. I absolutely love it. And that uh, dry down as well is very, very prominent. So, so good. Again, one of the only exceptions where I would actually buy this thing full retail, and I wear this any day, any season, any month, day or night, I don't care. This is really that good, guys. Tom Ford, Ebene Fume at number four on this list. Okay, coming in at number three on this list is gonna be coming in from the house of Initio Parfums, and I think you guys already know it. It's the moneymaker for the brand itself. It's gonna be Oud for Greatness. Oh my gosh, guys, so, so good. Now there's a reason why almost everyone has this in their collection, because yes, you get the oud that's very, very westernized, as in it's not aggressive. So in comparison to other oud offerings that are found in Middle Eastern markets, this is a lot more smoother. It's a lot more manageable, a lot more wearable as well. It is a wearable oud. But on top of that, the spices that are done in here, I think are just very, very underrated. A lot of people miss on these uh, in regards to spices. This is so perfect in regards to the blend with the spice. You get the coriander, you get a little bit of cumin. So uh, very hot, very spicy as well. So well done. It's not overcomplicated. It's really simple. It's just the spice and then you get the oud and it's so likable. And let me go ahead and spray some in the air. <sighs> Guys, really, really good. And I appreciate this as a wearable oud fragrance because in the American marketplace, the other oud fragrance that everyone goes to, which is the, the myth, the legend, the well-known superstar, it's gonna be Tom Ford oud wood. So this gives another option for the American market in regards to a wearable oud fragrance. So I'm always gonna be an advocate for something like that. And just a very beautiful presentation as well. Personally, I'm a sucker for black and gold anything. So this is so, so beautiful, guys. Again, if you guys haven't checked this one out, do check this one out if you like the idea of a very well-refined, polished oud. If you like the idea of wearable oud and spices as well with this oud fragrance, check this one out because you will not be disappointed. I wear this any season, any day. I don't care if it's winter, fall, spring, or summer. What's the one thing that I always say to you guys? Wear your fragrances unapologetically. And that's exactly what you should do with this. So this is Oud for Your Greatness. This is Oud for Greatness by Initio Parfums. All right, coming in at number two on this list is gonna be a little bit more different. Something that normally I wouldn't wear because of the sweetness aspect to this fragrance. But if you guys are like me, I rotate all of my fragrances. I like to keep things nice and fresh, keep everything new. So yeah, I do like fragrances that are a lot more leather heavy, a lot more amber heavy as well. But I think it's 
nice to kind of uh, think outside the box and wear something a little bit more new, something to kind of push you out of your boundary. Let me know if that makes sense in the comment box below. Let me know if you guys like to rotate your fragrances too. This fragrance is gonna be coming in from the house of Thamine, and this is Riviere. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's so, so new. Again, I, normally I wouldn't do something like this, guys, but it is a little bit different. It's a lot sweeter, so this is uh, supposedly a leather fragrance, but it's more leather, rose, and saffron. Now, normally, guys, I would not want to wear something that is rose dominant. This isn't rose dominant, but this is a very jammy, very sweet rose rosy fragrance i'm going to say i'm going to put it at rosy rosy jam the sweetness for the most part is a lot more aromatic so it is coming from the saffron so if you guys are familiar with uh Swedet saffron by nishane that same sweetness that same combination as a leather fragrance mixed with saffron is going to be found uh in here as well i'm not saying that this is a clone or a dupe of uh, Swedet Saffron by Nishane. I'm just trying to make the similarity for you guys to try to get the idea of what this smells like. But really, really different <laughs> for me, especially because I normally, again, I don't go with fragrances that are uh, sweet. And this definitely does have some sweetness. I would actually say this does lean a little bit more feminine and I would not, and let me say that one more time, I would not encourage you to buy this as a blind buy uh, because of that sweetness. But let's go ahead and spray this in the air so that you guys get an impression of the atomizer. And actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray this on my skin right here on the wrist. Let's go ahead and do that. Whoa, oh yeah, so, so good. Again something different. This is really different. This is outside of my box. And that's what I love about perfumery. Every scent profile, every type of fragrance kind of pushes you outside of your box because you have fragrances for winter, for fall, for spring, for summer. This is really versatile in my opinion. I think of this as a very sexy fragrance. It's a lot sweeter. It's a lot more agreeable as well because it has that jamminess component to it. Very, very good. And hands down, one of the best pressurized atomizers because it's so controllable and it really does give you a very long streak. And let me just show you guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray some on my, uh, my shirt here. Really, really good. I mean, really, really good. I'm just gonna spray another one because it smells amazing right now. Hold on. Really, really good. So if you haven't checked this one out, do check this one out. And the best part is, of course, magnetic caps. Come on. I'm a sucker for magnetic caps. I think every fragrance should have a magnetic cap. And if not a magnetic cap, it has to be a sturdy weighted cap, but really, really good guys. Again, do not buy this as a blind buy because this might be a little bit too sweet for you if you like leather masculine fragrances that are a little bit more heavy, a little bit more darker. Uh, this is a lot more rosier, a lot more jammy. But if you do wanna test your boundaries, go ahead and give this one a shot because I do think it would be very interesting for you to smell because it has that saffron and rose combination and it does have some uh, suede nuances as well in the background. But nonetheless, guys, this is gonna be Riviere by Thamine. All right, now we finally made it to number one on this list. My day one subscribers, you guys know that I am an old soul by heart. So for this, I wanna go fresh, but I also wanna keep it very, very classy and very timeless. And there's really one brand that does that really, really well for me, and that's gonna be Creed. So coming in from the house of Creed, this is Green Irish Tweed. Oh my gosh, guys. So, so enchanting. This is very masculine. This is very mature as well. I think that this is a perfect time to be wearing green Irish tweed because it's January, February, and March to me that represent this bottle right here, this fragrance. So right now where I'm at, I'm in the Midwest, and right now uh, there has been some snow, but the snow is melting and there's a lot of new growth, new grass coming from the snow as well. You get that very prominent lemon verbena, the violet 
violet leaf, ambergris, and sandalwood as well within this fragrance. But for me, everyone, this is perfect. This is an excellent representation of the aesthetic of the name. So the green Irish tweed, it's representing the fabric, and it's also representing the color or the hue via temperature as well. So that's why this works so good for me. But on top of that, the lemon verbena done in here is so gorgeous because normally with fragrances that are more citrusy, more lemony, uh, they might become a little bit too sharp, uh, especially if you're like me. I don't really like to do citrus fragrances because again, that citrus top that's kind of off-putting, uh, it comes out as too sharp and I, I just don't like that. And the combination of lemon verbena with ambergris is phenomenal because to me, it almost comes out as bread, like bread you would bake in the oven and, and it rises. That's what this comes out to me. So that's very, very crazy. And I, I absolutely love it. This to me is definitely wearing a suit. As you can see, I have a little bit more of a formal attire on today because this was my scent of the day. I can't get enough of this. I have another backup bottle, but let's go ahead and put it on skin. <sighs> Guys, so, so good. If you're looking for the old money aesthetic, you have to go with this green irish tweed so so good classic timeless masculine again guys i'm an old head i'm an old soul i love fragrances that have that timeless perspective that very classy very formal approach to perfumery so elegant guys if you haven't checked this one out before you have to try it at least sample it first but once again guys this is going to be coming in from the house of creed green irish tweed all right, everyone, and that was my selection for my top five fragrances for January of 2024. I do hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And once again, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe because it helps me to create a lot more content for you guys at a faster pace, but I need your help. Go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe. It's gonna help me a lot to create more stuff for you guys in the future. And if you guys aren't following me on the other social media platforms, go ahead and follow me as Philip Carter X Official on both Instagram and TikTok. On Instagram, Philip Carter X Official, where I post more about menswear, men's style, men's lifestyle, men's skincare, and of course, perfumery. As always, everyone, thank you very much for watching today. Philip Carter X Official out. Bye bye for now.